the triple a stuff is only a small part of egx as we as we discover every year there's the one of the big reasons you go to egx is there's hundreds i think is probably accurate to say of uh, smaller games so you can go and play at the indie games left field collection of the weird and wonderful well stuff. that and because i can't be asked to go to the tobacco dog <laughs> yes to play. true true I'm, uh, i might go one year but i um, every i say that every year and then uh, it comes around it's like well it's too late now <laughs> It's, it's, it's all right, Ian. It's we'll go to the Berlin one because you know why, why go to Gamescom when I, you can go to that. I meant to look up whether there was anything different or whether they were just lifting and shifting what was at Birmingham over to Berlin because that's on this weekend, isn't it? Yeah. So, so you would expect. I it suspect to be the same. it would be. But you might have different uh, dev sessions and stuff. I, I, uh, I'll, I will have a look at that later just, on when we're all done here. It's exactly the same, except everyone is wearing lederhosen and carrying a stein. <laughs> As well they should be. And there's just a guy, so, there's a guy in the background somewhere playing an accordion. <laughs> so, indie games, what did we have a go at? What's, what comes immediately to mind for you? Adam? Well, you know, just off the top of my head, not looking at this list I've got here at all. Um, not at all. Uh, Windjammers. Oh, yeah. So that was, that's, that's back to the Switch standards. Which, which we stupidly thought was uh, some weird indie game. Was, oh, look, it's in like a, a 90s uh, SNK style. Turns out, yes, it is an SNK yeah, yeah. game. Don't. It's, uh, yeah, old uh, nice Neo Geo game. Brought up to well up to date, sort of ported directly almost onto a onto Switch. It, it's it, yeah, it, it's pong, it's pong plus. It, it is kind of yeah. It reminded me a bit of that. Um, oh god, what did we play last year? Something Striker's Edge, um, where it's kind of like split from, from side to side, and you're kind of having to lob, lob spears, lob spears over. In this case, lob frisbees over. Um, it, it seemed to have a fair bit of depth that I didn't understand. So. Maybe maybe with a bit more time spent with it, we could uh, pull off also, some of Also, that controller was annoying because of where the trigger oh. was. Uh, you would occasionally catch the trigger and go, why have I just done a super See, move? I think your controller might have been a bit broken because that never happened to me. So. Again, massive spade hands, so... True, <laughs> true. Maybe. I should have just brought that Duke controller with <laughs> yes. me. So one of the bigger games, which is... You can almost call it a double A game because it's it's not really a it's not a triple A game and it's not really an indie game. A Phoenix Point. Um, yes, yeah. From uh, from Julian Gollop, the uh, the original developer of XCOM. It is sort of uh, XCOM plus Lovecraftian horrors and stuff like that, and uh, aliens and don't really know yet. It, it, it's still fairly early, it is. isn't it? I mean, the, the version we played came after a complete engine rebuild yeah, or just yeah. a complete code rebuild. I mean, I, I backed it. I actually had the backer build, but I hadn't played it yet. So I played it at EGX and then went home and did better <laughs> on the evening. So I, I, my first play of uh, Phoenix Point didn't go so well because I split my guys up and they all got horribly murdered. Um, but yeah, it was, it was quite a good demo because it, it's... You, it was basically just get into base, kill all aliens, but big massive alien turns up and uh, and you have to deal with that. Well, aliens in speech marks. They're called aliens at the moment, but we don't quite know what they are. Do we go in by the I, trailer? I, yeah, I think that's just placeholder, isn't didn't it? They sort of, uh, isn't the law that they sort of, you know, people marched into the sea and then marched out again a bit? Something like that, yeah. Some sort of Innsmouth job. Yeah, I think so. I think so. But, um, I mean... That was the uh, talk that uh, Julian Gollop was giving last year. Yes, at EGX. Yeah. But no, it was good fun. I, I really enjoyed that. I mean, I'm not vastly experienced on turn-based strategy, but it uh, it definitely uh... turn-based stress. Um, <laughs> yes. But no, I, I enjoyed. But I played the destructible terrain. Adds a decent uh, layer to it. It does. It's like I'm safe behind this building. Oh, this massive monster has smashed through said <laughs> building. I need to frig. And, and that. Even that is just in its uh, basic form at the moment. It's a bit sort of. Oh yeah, you, you can tell everything's quite you know early on in its production, but it works well enough. I think the guy described it as serial box destruction at the <laughs> at the moment. So it's like <laughs> it, you br- break buildings up in in little blocks, whereas I think in the final game you'll be it'll be a bit more structural, should we say? Because uh, you right. were definitely hiding on one side of the building while the. Uh, while the queen just like bashed through half the building, it's like there's no way that should be standing up anymore. 
But uh, yeah, but no, it was um, it was good. It went well, uh, it'd be nice to see some sort of reaction or animation from the anim- uh, the, the sort of creatures going through the buildings as well, because it was just. The queen moved and the building crumbled around it as it moved. There was no sort of reaction true, from it. True. So maybe they'll add something in because it just looks a bit unrealistic. I was going to say it's 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 still a, it's still a, uh, early days for it really at the moment. Yeah, the, the, and the guy was saying the AI is still early because you could you could dive into that sort of that recessed hole bit underneath the inside. That's right. Yeah. Bridge. Um, and just yeah, you, the queen couldn't get you at all. Yeah. So, but uh, there's lots to do. But it's definitely looking really nice. So. Uh, oh. I have seen games launched, uh, you know, completely in worse states. So. Oh yeah. So um, if that's um, if you're an XCOM guy or uh, or any other sort of turn-based strategy along those lines, then uh, maybe keep an eye on that. You can pre-order it at the moment off the website. Um, link in the description. I guess I could put the link in the description. I wasn't planning to, but now I have to. But okay. <laughs> <laughs> Making Ian work. What else do we have a look at? Um, Valfaris. Oh yeah, Valfaris from the guys who made Slain back to hell. So Slain was all medieval and that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Valfaris is um, all spaceships and that. Yeah. Um. So the the guy was saying it's inspired by forty k. Got a kind and... of heavy metal kind of feel to it. Yes, because Slain didn't. No, I mean I I meant more heavy metal as in the film rather than the uh, music genre. I don't know. I would argue. Slain has that as well. Okay. That, uh... You played more of that than I have, so I don't know. Yeah, no, it was good. I enjoyed it. Soundtrack is appropriately heavy as hell. It is. Um, and it, yeah, it, it's it's very tongue in cheek with the metal stuff. I mean, you pick up a new weapon and the guy starts head banging, yeah. um, which <laughs> is appreciated. But no, it, it's very good. It's quite challenging. Um, it it sort of punishes you for standing around too long. I think. I, after that, I watched someone else play it and I expected to do terribly at it, but actually. I did fine. Um, I, I watched you for a struggle for about five minutes with one puzzle, and that was quite pleasing. Yeah, yeah, but, uh, you know. If the door keeps shutting, should I stand closer to the door and hit this switch? No. No. But, um, but yeah, it was a good game. Good game. Just around the corner from Val Faris was Inmost, or in, Inmost, or... I'm not quite sure how you meant to pronounce it, but... Uh, in most, I guess so. Yeah, um, it's just it's just like a weird contracted version of innermost, I guess. I guess, yeah. But that that was pretty good fun. Uh, nice sort of like puzzle platformer. But uh, I've got a tagline for it: black and white and dead all over. <laughs> yes, it, it's one of these things where you're sort of wandering around a fairly innocuous world and then weird shadow things come out the floor and stuff it, yeah there's like puddles of black goop and it's all on the walls and if you stand too long next to, you know, it's almost like Heart of Darkness in that yeah, respect I guess it makes but it's one of those I guess you, I could call them you know old woman who swallowed a fly games you know you need a key to open the door to do X to do Y blah blah blah, yeah, blah. Yeah. you're in a very sort of small area when you do that and then once you do that you're into the next area you know yeah definitely, repeat, definitely. I guess definitely. Um, yeah, that's not necessarily a bad thing. No, no. It, it was fairly sedately paced, which was good. Until the end. Until the end, yes. What I really did like about it was the fact that they'd not done the real cheap-ass route that a lot of um, pixel art indie games do and just, you know, wet, say they rotate an item in-game. Rather than just, uh, you know, it's not actual pixels, just rotate it and it looks really dodgy. They'd actually animated, like, everything, so it's proper pixel animation. That, so, that is yeah. one of your pet hates. I, it just looks bad. I can't not see it. Like even, even Sonic Mania does it with like the the first boss, the two ball things. Okay. If you look at them when they spin, uh, certain animations, it just looks wrong. <laughs> and like when when Sonic and Tails and you know Knuckles are going round loops, they just rotate the thing rather than actually animate. Ah. Um, I I think so. It's, uh, once you see it, you can't unsee it, and it's really irritating. Well, I will, I will endeavour to not see it. So <laughs> it doesn't ruin well, you've got to edit this, me. and you'll hear me saying it again. So <laughs> ha 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 ha. Um, but yeah, it was, it, it, I, I, it was something I'd gone there intending to play, and uh, it didn't disappoint. Really, it was a good game. Uh, I, I'll, I'll probably grab that when it comes out, whenever that may be. We also played a game called. What the golf? Um, I mean, you did. I never got around to playing. Oh no, that. you didn't. You should have done. It, 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 yeah, it was always jammed up when I went to play it. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. Uh, and that was in the... Um... In the Leftfield collection, yeah. Yes. Um, a very odd game indeed. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically a little sort of uh, frog frog fractions x golf. <laughs> it's basically um, crazy golf kind of approach, sort of, uh, but a puzzle game at the same time. So you start the, the, off the guy, the, uh, the, the, the guy looking after it was pretty crazy. He was, it? yes. I assume he was the dev. <laughs> uh, I think so, yeah. Um, but yeah, you start off um, with a hole and have to figure out how to actually complete it. Um, That's what er- she said. Early on, it was uh, it was just you know hit the ball into the hole, just standard golf. Um, but very quickly, it became just crazy things like you. you well, one you of the ones it... I, I I sniggered quite loudly at was when it's, you see uh, it's the back fee and it's the guy getting ready to put the the ball. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you pull back on the things with just the strength, and rather than the ball go flying, the the, the guy goes tumbling forward across <laughs> yes. the green. That was quite funny. <laughs> yeah, and um, there's a. Uh... There, there's one where there's just a big uh, one shaped hole in the uh, in the green uh, and to start with you're going well what am I meant to do here there's no ball and then you realize that the ball is that is the hole under the flag at the start of the thing and you have to fire the hole at the one to get a hole in one <laughs> <laughs> Which is just gods, and there was like ones that were based on portal and <laughs> all sorts. Of, that actually, well, there's, actually there's, quite there's difficult. one. I, uh, there's one that's a house, isn't it? You have to friggin' roll a house across the green. Uh, most of them seem to be just um, to get some crazy pun to appear on the screen at the end of each of the hole. But um, yeah, that was crazy but fun. Crazy in a good way. What else do we have a go at? Mau Mau Castle. Okay, yeah, that was that was also quite crazy actually. In, yeah, in the context was, um, of crazy games. Basically, Gradius was it? Is it Gradius? Um, I was thinking Space Harrier myself, but that's the one. Yeah, so it's it, it's Space Harrier crossed with the dragon from Never Ending Story, crossed with a cat. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think did you play it with the motion bar yeah, there thing? Was little, that they had? There was like almost like a theremin style motion controller where you put your hand over a. A uh, motion detecting uh, it's got, it's thing. It's got a black bar of soap with the USB thing. Yeah, into it. and um, um, and, moved, but, and moved it around the screen like that. Where but it, when I came to have a go, obviously someone had I don't know broke it or spilled a coke on it or something. So they had like a massive trackball, which I think is probably the better way to play it. It's probably more likely that the the uh, motion controller costs like a horrendous amount of money, and they weren't there to attend the the stand. But I'm not sure. Possibly, but uh, yeah, it, it was it was definite fun but it was just you know there's no shoot you just roll the cat around the screen hitting and avoiding stuff and you know you've got like a boost and stuff and pickups but it's just yeah it's uh it gets crazier and crazier yeah it was good fun that one no i enjoyed it it's you know really it's a pretty simple game but it was it was just well executed definitely definitely worth a, a look i think it might be out i'm not sure uh i don't know some of these games are out and some of them aren't tends mm. to be the way of things um I uh, had sticking with the cat theme, actually. Go on. Puss. Oh yes, yes, that was. Jesus Christ! <laughs> you played that at the wrong time of day. <laughs> yeah, I was too tired. <laughs> to played, play that it was like pretty much the last thing you played, and yeah, that, it, that. So you know those games where you have to guide the loop over the wire, and if you mm-hmm. touch the wire, it's, it goes. Bzzz. Imagine that, but with cats, um, <laughs> vaporwave, and about uh, I don't know a pound of LSD. Oh, is that what the music style's called? <laughs> What? The vapor wave. <laughs> well, it was sort of vapor wave, but that was like okay, f- free weird vapor wave. <laughs> yeah, uh, my glasses vapor. It's more. I don't know if vapor wave just applies to music or a visual as well. I don't know. I mean, certainly, if is if if it's how I believe vapor wave is applied, then it was sort of had vapor wave visuals as well. But, um, but God, it was weird. The whole point was that actually the the gameplay itself was really quite simple but the music and the visuals and the flashing lights and the headaches and migraines were were attempting to distract you from a from from completing the level in a a sensible way but uh yeah that was that was another really insane game within the left field collection um but i did complete it so uh, and then I got a weird cutscene with the uh, cultist cats or something. <laughs> well, yeah, the, it, it seemed to be some like strange sort of look. It's like eighties visuals, you know, all neon blues and pinks, and then you just get weird like 
devil stuff creeping in. It's like, what it the had hell's a kind going of, on? It's, it's Pony Island? It had a kind of feel of Pony Island. That's exactly what I was about to say. Um, but yeah, I'd recommend giving it a go. Yeah, just just it, only it, in short chunks, because you might melt or destroy some brain cells in the process. So. Yeah. It's, uh, that was pretty good fun. Um, I had many goes at a game called Switch and Shoot. Oh god, switch and shoot! Yeah. Uh, very but excellent game. Very clever little concept. Um, basically, it's a vertically scrolling it's, shooter, it's and one button to control the entire game. So, yep. Every time you hit you the start button, the game off, the ship is just stationary on the screen. You hit the button, and it begins moving left or right. Every time you hit that button, it changes direction of the ship and fires. Yeah. So, yeah. So you'll find yourself Have hitting fun. the fire button a lot. I now own it. But there's also screen wrap. Yes, so you which can go I off never one use. side of the screen and come <laughs> on the next side. It, it, you can use it in certain instances, but I, I, I tended to find if I use the screen wrap, I would just end up confusing myself and killing myself very, very quickly because it, it it throws you off slightly. But um, you are from the black country. Well, it's true. It's true. But um, the um, so he's running a bit of a a score attack competition, um, which I got nowhere near. <laughs> To the uh, to winning, but both uh, got our names on the board. Though. We did, we did. Uh, I did all right. I, I downloaded the mobile version, and sat playing it in the in the queues all day, um, which was uh, a lot of fun. I now have it on Steam as well. Um, but yeah, it's a good game. Um, I still haven't beaten the uh, the high school. I've got sort of two thirds of the way there, but uh, but no, I haven't beaten that guy's school who uh, yeah. who won. <laughs> But no, it's good. Definitely a good game. Nice, quick, simple it's, game. It's really simple concept. It, it's it's a quintessential, just one more go game. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, what else? So a game I played that you did not um, was a game called Time Spinner, which uh, it's a side-scrolling platformer, as a lot of the indie games tend to be. Um, but this one has almost like a little bit of Prince of Persia: Sands of Time to it because. Uh, you have a shooting mechanic, so you can shoot the weird enemies bouncing around, but you also have a time-stopping mechanic, so you have a certain amount of sand that you can use in the a little egg timer in the corner of the screen, and you can freeze time, and while time is frozen, you can't get damaged by enemies, which also means you can do interesting puzzle mechanics like freezing enemies in the middle of the screen and then using them as platforms, which took me a little while to figure out, I have to admit. But, uh... Um, but yeah, so it's. I'd be interested to see what else they did with it. It's one of those things where you can use that that um, time stopping mechanic in quite a lot of different ways. I should imagine it was it was quite in- yeah, it's a sandbox sort of deal. No, no, it was it was a proper um, it was a proper side on. Um, no, no, but I mean st- that mechanic is a kind of a sandbox. Um, not really. It's 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 clearly intended to be used in certain ways. Um. And it is a story-based game, so, um, so for for example, when you got to the end of the level, um, you got a boss in a almost Sonic-esque kind of way. You sort of single-screen boss kind of uh, thing. Um, so in this case, it was like weird mechanical cat thing. So you shoot, be shooting it in the face, and it try and claw you with its with its uh, claws. Um, but then it would uh, crawl. As, as claws are used for. <laughs> but then it would crawl towards you, and you could then use the time stopping mechanic to basically be able to jump over its head to get to the other side, and then shoot from from the other side, and that kind of thing. So, I'm sure there's a lot more to it, but obviously it was only a fairly short demo. But it was it was pretty good. It definitely uh, definitely intrigued me. Um, I wouldn't mind giving that a go again at some point. So, okay. what else have you had uh, a go at? Um, one game I think we both played is uh, Dr. Dad's Home for Disposable Clothes. Oh, yes. That was excellent. Um, it also puts the fear of God into you for uh, the first couple of minutes. Uh, yes. Um, <laughs> it's basically, well, they described it as Spider-Man meets Portal. Which is basically what it was, yes. Well, yeah, so you are... I, I didn't actually try walking around all that much because there wasn't that much need to. It's a VR game uh, on the Vive, so you've got the room scale stuff so you can walk around with this, you know, 15 foot or so. I can't remember how much it was. Mm -hmm. Um, But your main method of locomotion is you have two guns um, that are basically tractor beams, so you 
or to simplify it further, it works like Spider-Man's web. So you fire them at the surface, they attach, you p physically pull backwards with both controllers, you fly forwards. Um, and, you know, you have to get around puzzles and do things with that. But after a while, rather than using both, you can sort of get into a Spider-Man rhythm of swinging across the ceilings, across the walls, things like that. It's, it's really, really cool. Yeah, I've was, not seen a, a VR game with that locomotion style before. It's crazy. It was a uh, it was a student game by some guys called uh, Deep Fried Games, um, and uh, some some Scottish guys called Deep Fried Games. Let's not forget that with the uh, kilts going around and all. Kilts? That. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're really nice guys, and uh, it's definitely something I'd like to see more of in the future. Um, but yeah, you're right. Well, I, I can I can imagine that kind of engine being used to make some sort of Spider-Man game. I mean, they they had a a competition on, didn't they? But it's, it's a shame they didn't win it because I, I think theirs was certainly the most one of the most inventive ones. Ah, that's true. It's true. But yeah, it, it had the whole kind of portal style tutorial section at the start. It's like get across these big drops and stuff. Um, or as Ian was trying to do, feed himself into the laser grid. <laughs> well, I thought you had to go over the top, but yeah, you had to go underneath it. Um, but the um, the key thing of that is uh, you effectively attaching the uh, your webs in inverted commas to the uh, to the air vents and then pulling laser yourself webs. off a of a <laughs> of a platform and then falling, um, which definitely made you sort of like a. Definitely tricky yeah, your, your, your legs start to tremble when you're, you're sort of plummeting towards the ground. Or even if you see a wall coming towards you. It's this thing I say that I always get with like good VR games is that it's real enough. Yeah, definitely. You know, the game looks cartoony as hell, whatever. It's computer graphics, obviously. But at a certain point, your brain sort of goes, yeah, that's reality. You believe this now. And it's like... Like on that... The, the, the old... Um, Vive demo on the pirate ship underwater. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's a in game. There's a sort of wooden rail, and rather than go, you know, it's not there really. You're peering over the edge of the rail <laughs> as if it exists. It's yeah, it's great. It's true, it's true. But yeah, but yeah, I, I would, I would, if if I had a Vive, I would definitely pick that up. Yeah, it's good fun. And probably smash half the stuff off my desk. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. I think that is a game that would most definitely be improved by the old uh, the wireless pack for the Vive. Yeah, yeah, I should think so. While we're on the subject of VR, we also both had a go at a game called The Persistence on the uh, PSVR. Um, oh yes, uh, System Shock VR. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so, so if you like your System Shock or, or, or your Dead Space kind of feeling stuff with the uh, space stations with zombies wandering around it and things like that, that was definitely what it was. But the the key. Uh, difference with this is while you're sat down and controlling your movement with a controller you're controlling your aim with your head so you you look at so something. even even daft handed uh, members of the elderly constituents yes. like uh, ian could aim effectively because all you need is a neck yes because controllers are not the correct thing to aim with <laughs> well no but still <laughs> but yeah it was, it was good there was two modes. There was the mode that you played, which just seems to be like a straightforward campaign run-through mode. Absolutely. Um, but it's, it's all it's all procedurally generated. Um, but while Ian was playing that, I was speaking to the dev who produced uh, an iPad, and there's a companion app so you can mess with or assist the person playing the game. So we were doing stuff like marking enemies for Ian, freezing them because he's, he's slow and lumpen. <laughs> Um, or we did put a fireball in at one point. That was quite entertaining. I was utterly but confused because then... suddenly enemies would freeze in front of me and I couldn't figure out what special thing I'd managed to do to <laughs> cause it to happen. Uh... <laughs> it's like, oh, oh, I was being assisted from the uh, behind the scenes. But no, it... Aided by the gods. But then there was the other mode, which was the challenge mode. So the one I played was glass cannon. So you have one hit point. But you have infinite ammo with any weapon that you pick at the start. You have one weapon. So I picked, I can't remember what it was called. It was like the Redeemer or something like that. I, I can't remember what it was called. Anyway, it seemed to fire a electrified bolt. Um, so that was quite good. There's a lot of moments of just something rushing at you and you're desperately trying to hit it. Um, yeah, there was me and the dev the, the, stood the, in the background just 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 looking at the thing approaching from the left, like, shoot it, shoot it, and you just get it the last possible second. The, the thing that screws you over in that game is the darkness, because they'll you'll see them running, in, they're, you know, they're in a lit part of the room, they run at you, and they enter the dark bit, and you're like, where the hell are they now? <laughs> uh, 
Um, the, the, the headphones for that weren't great because you know uh, I think there's stuff that attacked me from behind and it sounded like it was coming from the left. Ah. So yeah, but yeah, you could remedy that with better headphones. But, ah, yeah, yeah, really good game. But yeah, yeah. So that's a, a PlayStation exclusive. But if you have a PSVR, it might be something you want to have a look at. Um, I certainly haven't played an FPS in that kind of style so far. So yeah, I mean, certainly seems to be going. Um, well, not all in, but they're certainly continuing to invest in the VR stuff. They yeah. have said that they're working on a an improved headset or possibly a, an improved controller for VR. So, mm-hmm. yeah, good stuff. Oh, Hopefully that translates over to the PC. I wish they would have a, a better setup for their uh, PSVR demo stuff because at, at the moment they're, they're kind of demoing the hardware. So it's kind of like, come and play PSVR and we'll just stick you on a random game. But at, at, th- at this point, I want to play specific games, you know, so... Oh, I hate that. It's like, I don't want to play, you know, I, I don't want to play Jimmy White's Whirlwind VR Snooker. <laughs> I want to play Wipeout and be sick. I do quite want to play Jimmy White's Whirlwind VR Snooker now you say that. But, uh... <laughs> I know I made it up, but there's some there's some crap games in the VR, and then there's some really good ones. It's like, you know, you, you basically throw in the dice on what game you play, which exactly. is a bit of a, a pain. Um, yeah. But, eh, Hopefully they'll move away from that in the future, but... No, they won't. <laughs> well, true, true. So, what else did we play? Um, so, I had a go at a game called Eldest Souls, which was, as it might sound like, a Souls-like, very, very much uh, taking its cues from Dark Souls and Bloodborne and all those sorts of things, but in a sort of top-down um, view. It's a pre-alpha, so... If if you've played Ita before, you know exactly what it is. But most people won't have played Ita before. We've only played no, it because we no. went to EGX. But, um, um, and really, Ita's more top-down isometric, whereas this was proper sort of top-down, more in the vein of um, a Hyperlight Drifter, kind of, that kind of viewpoint. Mm, I disagree, but go on. Um, I don't know, I think it was, but... um. It's um, it definitely. I mean, it, it was fun. It definitely requires some tweaks. I think hitboxes are not quite there at the moment. You're definitely getting hit by things you shouldn't be getting hit by. Um, and maybe it needs to be a little bit more generous with the stamina. Or that that could just be a you haven't picked up some items in the in this demo that you'd be able to pick up in the main um, game and things like that. Possibly, but when you've got a boss that has like a, a five hit attack chain each attack homes after you and you only have three dodges Mm -hmm. um r.i.p i guess yeah i mean i managed to managed to deal with the first two bosses but uh that was about as far as i as i got but um it was um but it's definitely definitely had the right feel it it definitely felt like a a uh a souls like game i'd definitely be interested in giving that a go when it's done and dusted but that could be a while i think i don't think they were that far i was talking to the dev and he was saying uh, that uh, so I think there were three bosses in the demo in total, and there were only two in the demo on the Friday when he brought it. But people kept coming back saying, um, is, there, "Is there any more for me to play?" So they just added in one of the later game bosses <laughs> to the end of the demo for people to play um, the rest of the weekend. Um, I guess that's a good thing about being an early dev. You can just slap whatever latest build in you like. Yeah, or make yeah. On the fly. So there were there were two what they were calling guardian bosses um which is kind of like your sort of not mini bosses but you kind of like uh you know like the like the pig and stuff in the uh, in um dark souls or well, that wasn't really no, that's not a good example is it but yeah there, there was like smaller bosses and then they have what they call uh do you mean like the asylum demon and the taurus demon Taurus Demon's probably the best example. It's, it's kind of like a boss on the way to another boss kind of thing. Um, well, if if we're going to use that distinction, this, surely the Asylum Demon is the boss on the way to all the other bosses. Well, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but the um, the one they added was um, the first god, I think they were calling it, and, and it was a very different uh, uh, boss to the other two, which were more kind of... Um, just creatures or people. Um, well, it seemed to be two balls of energy, didn't it? Yeah. Whereas the yeah the the god was was two balls of energy, and I, I was watching 
your brother playing it. It's like, oh my god, how the hell are you supposed to deal with this? But uh, and, uh, and that's probably a good thing because that's a that's a Dark Souls thing as well, where you look at bosses and you go, what? Ornstein <laughs> is smart. Yes, exactly. How am I supposed to do this? But you get there in the end. So I'll, I'll be keeping an eye on that. Um, let's see, see how it goes. That, that was a that was certainly something that that was memorable for me from the event. What else did you play, Adam? Uh, I played a game called Tanglewood, which people may have heard of. Oh, yes. It's been in development for quite some time. Mm -hmm. So Tanglewood is, uh, well, it's technically a Mega Drive game. The guy spent six years, I believe, learning to code the entire game properly on a Mega Drive dev kit. 68,000 assembler is learning. <laughs> well, that's it, assembly code. But yeah, he has, he has coded it on an actual Mega Drive dev kit that he's, he's found. Um, and he's gone to the extent of producing proper cartridges yeah. that will work in a Mega Drive. Which is crazy. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it's absolutely nuts. I mean, you can, get, you can get it on Steam and it runs on its own emulator, but it is running the proper code. So it, technically, it's, it's a legit new Mega Drive game. Yeah. Um, it runs great, feels like a Mega Drive game, looks like a Mega Drive game. Um, but he's gone so far as to be able to get it to recognise when it's running on one of those shitey Blaze um, Mega Drive units mm -hmm. that you plug into the TV that accept cartridges <laughs> yeah. that knacker up all the sound. Yeah. Um, so he has a check in there to make changes to the sound engine on the fly so that it doesn't sound as bad on those. Um, no, it's, it's nuts. And he, he's got the, the, the game speed running the same on an NTSC. Oh, blimey, yeah. Man, that's Genesis a, and, uh, you know, a, a proper Mega Drive. And that's so, a frequent yeah, problem, the, isn't it? But, uh, oh, yeah. Well, it's like, so I think Sonic runs sort of like 30% slower on the on the UK. Oh, yeah. Europe, yeah, Mega and Drive. you get the same problem on some Mega games as well. Yeah, no, it, it's really, really impressive. Um, what he's been able to pull out the console effects-wise as well. I mean, like, he's got some screen wrap at one point where you'll go into a for lack of a better term, a teleporter and get shot halfway across the level and the, the, the speed the screen moves at is just you wouldn't really see that on any other Mega Drive game. Mm -hmm. It is nuts. Uh, and it, even even the box, so you, if you buy the cartridge off his website, um, it comes in a proper Mega Drive box with the tab on the top that they used to hang up on the shelves with. It's crazy. Um, <laughs> he's put so much work into it and it shows. I, I really enjoyed it. So... Um, what it is, it's basically a platform game. Um, you're going around collecting, or saving rather, these little fuzzballs. Um, you're you're a fox, you live in a forest, it's been corrupted by some dark evil. Mm -hmm. um, and you've got to go around and not get crushed by horrible pig monster things. Cool, cool. Yeah, it, it, it did yeah, look nice. Handles great. Oh yeah. I, I kind of wish they had the space to have some CRTs in there as well, just to, just to get the authentic view, the look of it, but there's yeah, you're restricted in space and on those uh, stands anyway. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I was playing the the, the, the finished um, journalist build oh, nice. uh, on the uh, the dev unit. Yeah, which was cool. That's cool, and it was nice to see the dev unit because that's not the kind of thing you see in person usually. No, no, no. It's, it was great to actually see the thing. It's um, <laughs> someone had fitted an aftermarket fan to the side of it. He was telling me, <laughs> and he just he's got some horrible wine that nearly drove him mad when oh, he was developing God. it, but. <laughs> No, it's great. So there's all sorts of power-ups and stuff. So, I mean, one of the power-ups is like a Knuckles-style glide. Um, one is it turns you green and you can stop time. Uh, when time is stopped, you can just walk through enemies. They won't hurt you. And uh, another one turns you blue. And that means you can tame the big beasts and ride them. But obviously, it's, it's a limited time thing. So when it runs out, they will try and kill you again. But no, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I played a game called Wavy the Rocket. Um, oh, yeah. Which, very, very unique. And, and we've, we've had in previous years cool, unique control methods. And this had a very unique control method because it was basically a side-on kind of, let's say, map navigation or level navigation kind of game. In the it was like frequency lines, wasn't it? Well, yeah, but the, the, the actual thing you had to do was almost in a similar vein to something like Flappy Bird for want of a better better uh, uh, comparison that you basically you've got to, you're constantly scrolling along you're controlling this little cartoon rocket and he follows a sinusoidal line 
uh, across the the screen um, and controlling it with the mouse as I was as I was doing uh, left and right change the um, change the uh, frequency of the the line so so the uh, the waves gets tighter or wider apart and moving the mouse up and down changes the amplitude so it get the the, uh, the wave gets taller or shorter and it's kind of a little counterintuitive to what you would normally think of when trying to control something um, and basically you're trying to navigate around the obstacles in the level pick up the pickups um, and get to the end of the level and then get to the boss but um, yeah, it was one of these games where you really have to change your ways of thinking because all the things you know about games don't no longer apply. So, for example, you're scrolling along. Your first instinct as a player is to um, look ahead and plan ahead to to the things that are coming up. But the what any changes you make to the uh, to the uh, sine wave um, apply across the whole screen. So you can. You can get things that lined up properly on the left hand side and then go right this bit's coming up now so i'm going to need to make the what the sine wave taller so you do that and then you just crash straight into the thing on the left hand side of the screen because you haven't reached the bit that you need to uh, change it for yet so you you almost have to know what's coming up but not do anything about it until the last second and um yeah it was really tricky but i played i, I played it through uh, six levels, I think. Uh, I got up to leave, and the guy said, well, "But you, you've got to play the boss. That's the next next uh, level." It's like, "Oh, okay then, fine." So I sat down, and uh, I played through the boss, and I said, "Look, if you manage to beat the boss, we'll give you a t-shirt." And I did, and I have my t-shirt now, <laughs> which is great. Uh, but it's fun, fun game. Um, so, so you know that t-shirt, you're gonna rock it. <sighs> <laughs> Yes, yes, I am going to rock that t-shirt. But yeah, um, fun game, very different, very different. Um, I also had a quick go at uh, Grip, which is a new roll cage, basically. Um, a game I already own, it turns out, and I forgot about <laughs> So I already have it on Steam. Because I got home at the evening after playing it, and it was updating on Steam. It's like, wait, I own this. Why was I playing it a year ago? <laughs> so, but yeah, it was a... Uh, it was very roll cagey. Um, I was really quite terrible at it, but I'm not very good at racing games anyway. Um, but uh, definitely very fast. And I would disagree with being very roll cagey. I think it felt a bit floaty compared to classic roll cage. It definitely. Uh, I mean, it's using all the same mechanics: so turn your cars upside down and all that kind of stuff, uh, weapons and and uh, boosts and all that kind of stuff. Um, and there's plenty of maps to play because it's just come out of early access, so it's basically the full game now. But it was, it was pretty good fun. So I played Eastward, which is... I think the best way to describe it is sort of Zelda meets uh, The Last of Us. Okay. <laughs> so there's, you know, you, you, you can walk around, smash monsters, that sort of thing. You know, you have to put bombs down in the old Zelda fashion. Um, but there's essentially you have two characters and you have to swap between them to complete puzzles so um, one part was one character could stand on a boat and hit um, like basically a tire on a wall to bench the boat off the wall uh, but going along there's obstacles that only the second character can destroy so it would just you'd have to sort of set the boat off going quickly swap to the other character to destroy the obstacles um, you know it, it's that kind of puzzle it's all about swapping around and uh, it, you know, getting your characters through the level. It was really good. Our art style was interesting. Oh, cool. Sort of that inspired by anime look that a lot of stuff has now. But it was it was well done. It, um, it, it, it did look nice. It had that almost sort of pastel kind of uh, palette to it, didn't it? Sort of uh, yeah, autumnal, yeah, yeah. I think is probably a good way of putting it. But, uh, yeah, no, it was good. The soundtrack was, was pretty good as well. Um, and yeah, everything was animated nicely. It looks good. It, I, no idea what the story is. There was, you know, there were snippets of story in the demo, but there wasn't enough to sort of go, ah, this is what's going to go on here. No. Um, but I, I think the main gist of it is small girl with white hair has magic thing is accompanied by bloke with a frying pan. So. <laughs> yeah, of course. Why not? Yeah. Maybe he's uh, escaped from Erin girl or something. I don't know. 
But uh, no, it looked really good. That's an interesting one to watch. Look forward to play that. Cool. Um, I played a game called Soundfall, which was a, uh, a rhythm-based game uh, in the vein of something like Crypt of the Necrodancer. In fact, some of the UI elements were very, very clearly inspired by Crypt of the Necrodancer. But um, yeah, it's it's a it's a uh, a single player or co-op shooter, sort of a top-down, uh, almost well, basically a twin-stick shooter where you uh, you can move around. You get a sword and a gun. And um, but well, you... I'd be careful on the twin stick shooter front. It wasn't really. There was quite a bit of auto aim in there for you. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was. I think the main thing that mattered was your positioning and you shooting on the beat. If you played the new, um, the new version of Gauntlet, they did very similar in in in, in that context because that had a fair bit of that sort of auto aim attacks as well. Uh, and it did was a little irritating at times because it did have a habit of targeting not the thing that you wanted to attack sometimes but um that was you just you just dealt with it and and, uh, and moved up moved on kind of thing but um, i think if i had a criticism it would be to move that that sort of the beat counter somewhere else on the screen because i often found like you know you listen to the song going i think i'm on the beat yeah and you'd have to look off of where the hell you were to look at that beat counter to figure out where the beat was coming i think that would be the only See, criticism i had you know move it up the screen or do something on your character's back maybe i don't know it made more sense in crypt of the necrodancer because it wasn't quite as fast paced a game as a it was all, all uh, as nearly this one. turn-based isn't it necrodancer yeah yeah and, and the the actual beats are slower whereas this was a lot quicker um because I, I was finding I was, I was, because you can only fire on the beat, or, or well, no, you, I you can fire off the beat. But if you fire too much off the beat, your weapon has a cooldown. Yeah, and you, you, I think you only fire effectively on the beat. You get a much better attack um, when when you're on the beat. But um, I was finding I was firing on the beat, but actually I was I was like half speed kind of thing. I could actually go twice as fast, and I was a, uh, uh, and uh, I could. Uh, do a lot better once i started using the dash on the beat as well uh, i got into a lot better rhythm and and, uh, uh, and did a lot better but I, I only played it um uh, single player i played through all, all three levels that were in that demo but uh it was probably quite good fun the music was good and um i definitely would be interested in playing that again because i've played quite a lot of crypt of the necrodancer I, I do like those sorts of rhythm games uh how, how was it co-op by the way it was pretty good it's <laughs> There was nothing, you know. I, I think the guy mentioned some sort of team up attacks, but we never managed to. No, get right, okay. To activate or you know, there was no prompts came up. Um, but yeah, it, it works pretty much like how you'd expect. There's just more of you on the screen, and um, people can get left behind if they're piddling about. You know, if those the sections you have to sort of dash along the pipes. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we, so somebody, I can see why that would be a problem. Someone had like hands made of butter or something, so they didn't get on that so we had to like come back and get them back on the, <laughs> right, the pipe because okay. they couldn't see yeah um, but yeah it, it's yeah it works how you'd expect pretty much yeah it's good i like a good rhythm game so it was a it was definitely uh welcome to to be able to play that um right next to that i also played a game called eagle island which was a, a side scrolling platform puzzler um bizarrely platformer involving falconry Although it seemed to involve, it claimed it had falconry, but I'm pretty sure you had owls, so I'm not quite sure how that works. Um, but basically, you can uh, run around, jump around. It's all. Uh... Have you never heard of an eagle owl? <laughs> yes. Um, but um, you can. Um... It's all procedure generated, as these things tend to be, um, and you um, you basically jump around and attack enemies using the. Uh, using the uh, owl um, effectively firing it in one of the cardinal directions um, which um, it t- took a little bit a little time to get the hang of but um, basically if there's multiple enemies there you can you can get a combo so you can basically hit the one that, then to the next one then to the next one I think if you get to four you get a health boost back and things like this so it definitely had some um, some interesting uh, mechanics in there. Um, I don't think the demo there was enough in the demo to really demonstrate um, what else it would add. I had a bit of a chat to the dev, and I know they're, they're planning to add some like more 
clearly defined campaign modes where there's some crafted stuff and there's some procedural stuff and things like that but um um that's not in there right now i don't think but uh but it was good fun it was all right um what else is there i think the only other thing to talk about is a game called TikTok, which we had to go out in the left field collection uh, which was a co-op game but it was co-op in the style of um it, it it's dumb co-op it um so it's device agnostic in speech marks yeah. but you know one of you has to pick player one the other has to pick player two and um there's sort of there's gaps missing in player one's version of the game that are filled in by player two's game. So, you know, there's no direct communication between the two devices playing the game. It's, it's just set up in that sort of staggered way. Um, but it works pretty well. It was, it was your co-op in the same sort of style as um, uh, We Were Here and uh, um, Keep Talking and No One Explodes. Um where, where one person has one version of the truth, the other person has the other version of the truth, and it's all about the talking to get to get to the uh, the joint solution kind of thing. Um, but yeah, it was good. It was it, yeah. Each each game basically has holes that need to be filled in. Yeah. And the the instructions for what to fill those holes in with are in the other version of the game. Yeah. So it's quite nicely sedately paced as well, which is a uh, which helps because <laughs> um, uh, I think um, sometimes these co-op games can be a little bit too hectic. Um, where it's nice to just be able to go right. So what are you seeing? What do you reckon about this? Have a good chat about the puzzles and all that kind of stuff. And it was right. Uh, I, there was definitely an interesting plot behind it as well. I was chatting to the dev about that uh, around sort of. Uh, people stealing time from other people time vampires and that kind of thing so uh, it might be interesting to to uh, to look that one up later on yeah yeah it, it, it was an interesting concept um sort of time bending you know you had to go and do certain like that one place with the train we had to do things at certain times and had to tune radios to specific frequencies yeah. that sort of thing so yeah it was it was good it's good i enjoyed it uh, and i think that about is it. about it. So, what was your favourite indie slash left field game from uh, from EGX? Ooh, it's got. I, I I'm going to give my vote to the Doctor Dad's Home for Disposable Clones because yeah. it, it was it was pretty damn enthralling. I really enjoyed Doctor um, Dad's. So it, it, yeah. It's probably something I will not get to play in the near future because I don't have a VR um, headset. But um, once I've sold my kidney, yes. Uh, but uh, hope, yeah. hopefully that'll that'll become something. That'll be, it. Uh, and it's always nice to play the VR games at uh, AGX because it's something you don't get to do elsewhere. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, Doctor Dad's does seem like something that Devolver would lap up. So hopefully they get wind of that. Yeah, and give um, those guys some some wings to fly on the Steam still. Yeah, uh, and Switch and Shoot and Phoenix Point are probably the. Uh, the joint runners up there. Yeah, same, same. Um, both very, very good games. But to be honest, there were a lot of really good indie games there, and quite a lot that I would quite happily pick up um, when they're when they've been released and give give yeah. them a go. So, but other than that, it was a, it was a good weekend. Very tiring yeah. as always, but uh, good times were had by all. All right. So, um, if you have any questions about what we've seen, happy to el- elaborate further in the comments. Uh, let us know. And uh, if there's anything we've talked about that you're particularly looking forward to, let us know as well. But uh, we'll be back with more videos at some point. So subscribe and uh, hit the notification bell and all that kind of good stuff. And uh, and I guess we will see you soon. Goodbye. Tatty bye.